Project 80 is Big Thrust. We are going to use several power sources, the battery, the solar cell, the hand crank, and the windmill. And we have the two LEDs. Make sure that you are in a bright area where the solar cell can receive plenty of light, from the sun preferably, but if not, you can use an incandescent lamp. I'm going to move the switch to the B position, and the LEDs light up because there's a lot of power from all these sources that combine to power the LEDs. Now if I gave this fan a spin, it's possible it might rotate on its own. It's not doing it now, but if there was just enough light, it may rotate slowly on its own if you give it a small push. Turning the hand crank will generate even more power. Turn it clockwise as well. The fan may also spin. Here is the solar light clock. We will have the slide switch set to position B and make sure that the solar cell is near either sunlight or an incandescent lamp. And the clock will power up if the light is sufficient. Move those wires out of the way. But if I was to cover the solar cell, it would turn off completely because no light is getting to the clock. The meter will be set to the 0.5 milliamp setting and when I move the slide switch to position C the battery will charge if there's enough sunlight and you can see that the more sunlight there is the higher the current that is recorded by the meter over 0.5 milliamps and then blocking the solar cell will prevent any current from flowing through. The next project is very similar to 81, except now we're using the solar cell and yellow LED. With the switch set to position B, I am going to place the solar cell next to a bright area, and the more light there is on it, the brighter the yellow LED gets. Now the yellow LED requires much more light to come on because it requires a higher voltage. Unlike the clock, the clock uses far less power. Now for the second part, I'm going to move the slide switch to the C position and now the rechargeable battery is included in the circuit and it is powering the yellow LED. The meter will be set to the same setting as in the previous project, 0.5 milliamps, but it is much harder for the uh, solar cell to power the meter and therefore charge the battery since the yellow LED requires more current for it to flow through. 83 is solar lights row. With the meter, Set to the 5 volt setting, we will adjust the solar cell so that it receives just the right amount of sunlight. So I'm going to have it right out this window, and then we can see that it read the meter reads close to 2.5 volts. But realize that there is a resistor in the pivot stand holding the solar cell that actually doubles the voltage. So now if it was two and a half volts, it would really be five volts. And now pushing the press switch will include both LEDs in the circuit. And both LEDs actually resist the flow of electric current more than just once and it makes it easier for the solar cell to run them. The voltage also drops 
very little, if at all, in this project, unlike in the solar power project in which only the yellow LED was included. We are going to move the slide switch to the B position. Now we can have the meter set on the 0.5 milliamp setting or the 50 milliamp setting. I'm going to move the slide switch to the B position and the meter will show that current is flowing from the battery and the yellow LED comes on. On the 50 milliamp setting, it reads just over 10 milliamps. And now we need to turn the hand crank counterclockwise. And it might be tricky to do this one handed, but when I do so, the red LED comes on and the meter will stop showing the flow of current. You have to be careful when turning the hand crank because you don't want to break it. But turning the hand crank kind of bypasses the battery and the hand crank takes over. You could pretend that the battery is like a backup system while the hand crank is the main power system and that if the hand crank fails, then the battery will take over and power the yellow LED for a while. Almost like a backup generator. Project 85 is kind of like the reverse for the previous project. When we turn the slide switch to the B position, the meter shows no current. When it's either on the 0.5 or 50 milliamp setting. The yellow LED is on, but when I turn the hand crank, the meter, if I turn it fast enough, the meter, as you can see, records the current that is flowing into the battery, not out of the battery. If you turn the slide switch to position C, then only the hand crank will be able to run the LEDs. The battery is disconnected. Project 86 is crank sound. We modified the previous project and I am going to turn on the slide switch, move it to the B position. Now please turn down your volume because this is going to be loud. The horn sounds and the voltage meter will read it looks like just over five or maybe about six milliamps. Now when I move the switch back to the C position, turning the hand crank will power not only the horn but the red LED as well. But the sound is not as loud or clear as with the battery. However, when we add the C5 capacitor over here, and turn the hand crank, the sound will be louder and clearer just like the battery because the capacitor filters the electricity so it is more stable. Project 87 hand lights is very interesting. I am going to have the voltage meter set on the 5 volt setting and then I will turn the hand crank first clockwise and then counterclockwise. When I turn the crank clockwise, the yellow LED comes on and you can see that the meter records a very high voltage. I can reach five volts. Now when I turn the crank counterclockwise, only the red LED comes on due to the fact that it is hooked up in the opposite direction. Power can only flow through an LED in one way. So, turning the crank clockwise allows it to flow through the yellow LED and then counterclockwise through the red LED. And then, if I was to 
disconnect this two snap wire, a 10,000 ohm resistor will be included. And so now the voltage produced would be doubled. So if I was to reach 10 volts, five volts, it would really be 10 volts. The hand crank has a gearbox allowing a motor in it to spin faster and with less force than when you turn the crank, therefore producing more electricity the more the motor spins. Project 88 hand noise is very similar to 86, but we just simply turn the hand crank and the horn will sound. Please turn down your volume. Turning the hand crank powers the horn. Now, if I was to hold down the press switch while turning the hand crank, the horn should be a little bit louder. Sorry, I cannot really do that one-handed, but hitting, holding down the press switch adds the capacitor to the circuit so that it filters and stabilizes the electricity, improving performance of the horn. What's interesting about this circuit is that you could actually take it somewhere, like in the wilderness, and if you were stranded, you could try to signal an alarm by turning the hand crank and also holding down the press switch to make it loud. So hopefully if there are other people nearby, you could grab their attention. Although if you're really stranded, you may not be able to do that if you are far away from other people. 89 is heavy fan. We will have the water wheel mounted on the motor and the objective is to blow onto the wheel so that it spins in a counterclockwise direction first. The meter will be on the 5 volt setting and I'm going to try blowing it and now watch the red LED. I don't know exactly how much voltage I produce, but it was enough to light the red LED. Now I can blow on the fan so that it spins clockwise, but it will be more difficult to do so. I'll see what I can do. I can't really get the yellow LED light up, but that's what will happen if you blow hard enough.